Welcome back to a new episode of Home Course. Today we're in the great state of Arkansas, which is home to some of the most beautiful lakes, rivers, and hot springs in the country. It's also home to legendary golfer and five-time PGA Tour winner, John Daly. Daly's a two-time major champion and one of the most polarizing figures in all of sports. Just grip it and rip it. He's invited us out to tour his home, dive into his career accomplishments, and his lifestyle off the course. Good on you for tuning in, because this is going to be a good one. Let's go check it out. What's going on, everybody? PGA Memes is all about having fun and bringing people together in golf through humor and good times. When me and my crew are seeking more enjoyment out on the course, our go-to beer is Corona Premier. Golf shouldn't be so serious. It should be an enjoyable experience for anyone and everyone. Corona Premier is the finer light cerveza for those who don't compromise on a light beer experience. Is your light beer Premier? Come on in. John, how's it going? What's up, Trav? <laughs> hey, thanks for having us, man. Oh, you Appreciate it, it, brother. You Dude. betcha. Oh. It's a little home away from home on the road. Yeah, Take so it everywhere. You're not in the air very often, so you like to be wheels on the ground driving around everywhere, right? Oh, yeah. So how long have you had this for? I've had a coach since 92. This one's in 07, and I just don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. I love the um, Detroit 60 engines. Yeah. Very low, so. Well, I mean, this has everything that you'd possibly need in it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got TVs here. TV in the back, washer, dryer, bathroom, shower, sink. It's got a cooker there. I bring my own. <laughs> my babies are up there. I see you got some uh, special hardware here too. Yeah. So, all right, two major trophies right here: the Wanamaker, the Claret Jug. Um, Wanamaker, incredible story. I mean, you go get in as ninth alternate and win the PGA Championship. I, mean, I know you've probably told the story a million times, but I mean, walk us through that. I mean, it's like. These major championships, PGA is always going to be the, one of the strongest fields in golf. To get in as you did and go in and just take the, the field by storm and win. I mean, what was that experience like for you? Well, I didn't, me and Betty didn't get in until like 2 o'clock that morning. We drove from Memphis and there was a message saying you have Nick Price's time, I think 12 something. And I was cool. It was cool I got in. I mean, I had already conquered the goal of 91 that I secured my card for 92. Yeah. At $162,000. <laughs> you make one hundred sixty-two thousand dollars on the tour. You're 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 going away broke. You're yeah. finishing about two hundred eightieth or three hundredth on the money list. But, yeah. um, and Squeaky was there. Jeff Midlin, who was Nick Price's caddy. Um, Nick asked me if he could caddy. I said, Yeah, I, I don't have one. I need him. That'd be great. And he knew the course, and uh, he didn't quite know the club selection until after I hit the second hole. I hit an eight iron from two hundred five. He goes, Okay, I get it. You're four clubs stronger than Nick. Sorry, Nick, but <laughs> I hit an eight iron two hundred five, and he figured it out from there. And, and we was just, we just, we just, I mean, we just hit it like that. It was awesome. Yeah, probably one of the most famous viral pictures in golf even to this day is you celebrating on the seventy second hole and you get the, the streaker running around. <laughs> what was that experience like? Wow, what's um, <laughs> what's his name? He chipped, you know, he made that long putt. I thought it was over, you know. And next thing you know, we go on a playoff, and I love what the RNA did because I. I was kind of settled down a little bit, but Rocco, he was uh, he was coming off of 18, and we went right to the tee. He still had that Some fire just crazy fire. adrenaline, like yeah. wow, I can't you know I can't believe I made that putt, and and he for, unfortunately three putted one. I, I was one up, and then I birdied two. I'm two up, and then 17. He was in the bunker a little bit, but yeah. um, that's one of the ultimate ones to win, the home of golf. Oh, it's unbelievable. Some redneck from Arkansas. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. It has closet space in there, there's a sink in there, and then there's the washer dryers on the end, and it's got a really nice grill outside and a TV outside. Yeah. To watch football and sports and stuff. Walking in, I noticed this wall here with some, uh, some paintings and some murals and special moments. It's pretty cool. Yeah, when I did David Faraday's show on the Golf Channel, I went up on three and hit a ball out of his mouth. and. We did the interview right here. He looks at the mirror, he goes, do you know I was, I think I was seventh place. 
I mean, okay, that's great. He goes, no, I want to see it on that wall. So we had Golf Channel come in and redo the mirror that was already on there. Okay. And they did an unbelievable job. Yeah, I mean, that's it's amazing. It's a lot better than the other one, trust me. Yeah. He just wanted his name up there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds just like him, so. Oh, you gotta love him. This one, it's one of my favorite courses, Torrey Pine South. Uh, love that golf course to win there. It was just, was pretty cool. And then this is uh, Bell South. Atlanta Classic, and then uh, that's the Rookie of the Year. BC Open, somewhere in here. There's a BC Open one. All right, so we've been through a lot of homes and seen some of them really, but this, this room has got everything, and it's a collection from all different types of sports. So, I mean, love to see it. Tell me a little bit how you got into collecting some of this stuff. Well, I mean, I... Uh, I remember in 91, I was, was almost going to kick a field going to a preseason game for the Colts. And uh, Hersey wanted to do it, but the insurance and all the NFL said no. But I met Jeff George, and I knew Eric Dickerson through SMU. He used to kick our ass in football at Arkansas when I was yeah. playing golf at Arkansas. And yeah. I said, man, it's great to see you guys. Uh, I'd love to have your jerseys. So they took them off, signed them, and then it all became this and all over this house. You know, yeah. the cowboy rooms upstairs. I mean. It, uh, some of the jerseys I got, I mean, it's just, it's just incredible what golf's done for me to meet all these great people. Yeah. I mean, you see John Daly out with the president and just famous musicians and stuff golfing. Who's, who's been like the one person that you've gone out on the golf course or had an opportunity to spend some really good time with you were just like out of body experience where you're like, this is unbelievable. Well, of course, Daddy Trump. I mean, he's <laughs> just the best. He's so positive. He's got so much energy, but Mostly my country music friends. I mean, I yeah. just had a hell of a, a morning the other day with Aaron Lewis. Man, we, we've never been, we've been friends in a long time. We've never been able to just have a day, go out and play golf. And we talk more than we play golf, just about life and our careers. And, you know, we're kind of the rebel. He's kind of the rebel of country and mm -hmm. uh, his thing. And, um, and I've been kind of the rebel of golf. Um, but we, we relate to each other, you know. And yeah. uh, there's so many of them. I mean, I, if I forget somebody, I'll get, they'll get mad at me, but <laughs> pretty much every country star that I play golf with, we, yeah. it's the same experience. I mean, and rock and rollers, Eddie Van Halen, I play with him, Bob Hope, uh, Kid Rock, I go to his place a lot. We play a lot of golf together. Yeah. You know, I get to watch him, his beautiful studio uh, that he has now, but uh, yeah. the writers like Cole Taylor and Tyler Reeves that are on my album. Mm -hmm. Marty Evan, who's a good buddy of mine, just came out. Um, we wrote some really cool songs on the on the album, and, yeah. um, just to meet them and watch what they do and, and how they help me, you know. And I helped them in golf. Yep. You know, we had a great day with Cole Swindle the other day. I mean, but That's awesome. you never know who's going to come out. There's so many of them that yeah. I met. I mean, but Jamie Johnson, Kid Rock playing golf, I never thought it would happen. <laughs> they ain't, ain't, Jamie, I ain't chasing that white ball. <laughs> Kid goes, fuck no, I ain't playing golf. I got patience for it, and then next thing you know. Hey. Jamie buys a course, <laughs> you know, he sold it now, but, uh, yeah. but they love it. They love to play golf. And that was kind of my way. I met all these guys. Yeah. I see my kid golf. up there every year in the Detroit swing for the, uh, for the tournament up there, the rocket mortgage. Yeah. He's very involved in that. It's pretty cool to see that. And he comes out, watches me every now and then for the champions tour at World yeah. War Kills where we used to play the Buick. It's yeah. an ally. Yeah. So we have a blast. I stay at his place and uh, we just chill. It's That's just awesome. great. So obviously it's golf. You grew up, you played some football, so you were a QB and a place kicker, correct? Uh, pop, prep for one or a quarterback, okay. but I, I was so flat-footed and fat I couldn't run, So, but I could throw it. <laughs> yeah. And I started kicking field goals. I did pump, pass, and kick a lot. My yeah. best thing was kicking okay. kicking the ball. So uh, my senior year of Elias, I, they didn't have a field goal kicker, and Coach Inches was our golf coach. He was a football coach. He says, do you kick football? I go, yeah. Yeah. We need a field goal kicker and set some records in field goal kicking. <laughs> yeah. Got recruited by Missouri for golf and, and field goals. And, oh, that's awesome. And uh, ended up going to Arkansas because that's just my place I always wanted to go. Yeah. So, sports fan, big sports fan, obviously. Your team's the Dallas Cowboys. You've got a big love for the Cowboys. Cowboys, Cardinals, Cardinals. Celtics, and Razorbacks. It hadn't changed. Those are your teams. They hadn't changed since I was four. Wow. Okay. 
Celtics, where'd that one come about? You live in Arkansas, you yeah. see the Lakers and Celtics playing all the time. Okay. And I just, I just, I don't know, the green, the luck of the Irish, because I'm Irish. So I, I love yeah. and Larry Bird and yeah. Paris and McHale and Danny Ainge and all those guys when I was young, they were they were playing some pretty good ball. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, golf, there's a lot of things going on in golf. We talked about the distance stuff. There's rumors of like a new league going and people are looking like growing the game of golf and players are talking about money and media rights and stuff like what's your stance on golf you've been you've been through you've seen a lot of the involvement of, or the the evolution of the pga tour and the growth of the game i mean what's your thoughts on the future of the game and, and having a rival league pop up i don't know i mean it's amazing it hasn't popped up before but it just maybe they can get together and work something out where they can share some tournaments i mean mm -hmm. um you know, the money's unbelievable out on our tour already, not on the yeah. Champions Tour, of course, but on the yeah. regular tour, it's just crazy money. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't know what to do, because I know my, you know, I've got a great future behind me, Travis, so yeah. I don't, yeah. <laughs> don't think I'll be playing either one of them, but um, I think they're a little harsh on Phil. I mean, Phil probably didn't say it in the right way, but um, I'd rather see them work together and try and figure it out than everybody just bad-mouthing each other about sure. it. Um, Saudi's got a lot of money. Yeah. Maybe we could come, they could sit down and talk and maybe work it together where it's fair for everybody. And, you know, I mean, you're looking at, first of all, you're looking at 14 tournaments. If I was, if I was a man thinking about it, mm -hmm. guaranteed a hundred grand to play, only yeah. 64 guys. Yeah, you have to think about it. Yeah, of course. But do you want to give up what you've done on the tour and not being able to play the tour anymore? Or, I don't, yeah. I really don't. I mean, unless they come, with me and offer me 150 million, nobody's gonna say, well, John Daly went there, nobody's gonna care. Yeah. Because my career's kind of over anyway. Yeah. You know? So, but um, I just wish everybody, I wish Phil would come back and he's been playing too good and mm -hmm. hopefully they can resolve it. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of a PJ Tour guy. I've yeah. been a PJ Tour guy all my life and probably always will be. Yeah. Now, hopefully he can bounce back from it, obviously defend his title, PGA, an incredible win last year to come out and win. And that course, those conditions was like no one expected I was there. that at all. I was know? there, it was brutal. Yeah. I mean, it was just absolutely brutal. He played great, but you know, it just, I don't know. Uh, I've never really worried about the money. I just, I always want to win trophies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can make a lot, it's great, but I've always wanted to win. I never played for second. So yeah. I, I care about the trophies. That's yeah. all I care about. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about your passion for music. I know you got a music room, so I'd love to, to go up there and check it out and, and show everybody what you have there, just what got you so involved in the music and your love for it. So let's go take a look at that. You got it. There's always, there's a love for music and then there's a love to create music. I mean, when did that all start for you? Probably about 94 when uh, I was playing golf with all these guys and they saw how passionate I was about music and uh, Larry uh, played the tour. He said, we went and bought a guitar in Erie and you know, I said, hey, just go buy you a three, four hundred dollar guitar. I buy a seven thousand dollar guitar like an idiot. And, <laughs> um, he got me started and uh, got to know Darius Rucker real well and started playing their their ma'am every year and got to know them and Johnny Lee was probably my best friend in music. Mm -hmm. um, he taught me so much and just going around, a lot of, like Johnny Lee would never rehearse, so you just go to the show. Yeah. Uh, but I love to see guys rehearse because that's where you get to know them and, and yeah. know what's going on. But uh, I just kind of learn. I still don't play the guitar very good. I know enough to write. Mm -hmm. um, but when I get all my friends up here, they just they admire some of these guitars. I mean, Kid Rock sent me that. He had that made for me. BB King gave that office. So this is from BB King. This is. Specially made for you from Kid made, Rock. Yeah, he made it for me. Surprised me with it, and then this is your part of the lion. That's just my lion. This is lion. Okay. And that's things about 15 years old. Okay. I was fortunate to get to know Charlie Daniels real well. We became friends. I'd already been friends with Willie, and Willie called me. He says, "Are you uh, doing Nashville?" And I go, "Yeah, I just happen to be pulling in Tootsie's right now. I'm in the back alley of my bus." He goes, "Well, I'll be there in five minutes. I got to ask <laughs> you a question." Because I was going to see Charlie Daniels, his eighth millionth. Uh, award uh -huh. for radio play on Devil Went Down to Georgia. So yeah. Willie comes out of the bus, he goes, you're going to announce it. Oh, I go, Charlie's going to get pissed at you, dude. He goes, I want him to be pissed at me. <laughs> so I said, yeah, no problem. And so I go in and Charlie gave me a big old hug and uh, said, I got a surprise for you after the show. 
and it was that. And, which is even better, he broke a string on it. And he signed it, gave <laughs> it to me. Yeah. That is awesome. So was, <coughs> so was he pissed off or no? No, no. <laughs> he, he says, I'd rather have you do it than that old fart anyway. You know, it was just funny. They, they're such good friends, but they won't. I don't know, it's like Hogan and Palmer, I think. Palmer, Palmer will always say, great shot, Ben. Mm -hmm. Ben would never say, great shot. Yeah. But they love each other. They were, they were, Charlie was the best. Everybody loved Charlie. And so when I played with the Bob Hope with Eddie Van Halen, you know, he pretty good. He wasn't much of a golfer, but okay. he just, he loved the game. And he came to the condo and I was cooking some steaks for him. And he said, what's that guitar over there? I said, yeah, I'm just trying to learn a little bit. He goes, man, he looks at it. Wow, that's a piece of shit. <laughs> I spent $7,800 on it. It was a collector. One had a 19 Fender, right? You tell yeah. me. Ah, bro, I'll send you some stuff. So I get home about a month later, the 5150 amps right there are here. And Ernie Ball, his guitar he sent me. <laughs> he sent you all of that. He sent me all that. <laughs> and Mark Bryan, every time he comes in, he turns that on and just jams for just hours. Just Everybody, thing. Steve Cropper, they, it's just the most unbelievable sound. Of wow. amps you've ever heard. Wow. Of but this album was really cool because I got to write with some of the best songwriters in Nashville. Yeah. Tyler Reeve, Cole Taylor. I think Marty's going to be great. Yeah. Eddie. How cool of an experience. Nick, I mean, all these guys. I mean, it's just, but, you know, the cool thing is, is all I did was send that Whiskey and Water song to Willie. Yeah. And if you hear this, he's on the second verse and does a lead. I didn't, didn't ask him to be on it. So everybody's kind of jealous of me in Nashville. You got a song with Willie? That's that's BS, man. Every, all of the greats are going like, oh, we I can't get a song with Willie. I go, he's just my friend. Yeah. But they're all. I didn't think about this until um, I don't know who said it. Mark Bryan said it at his tournament. He goes, you know, that might be the last song Willie would ever cut with anybody. Wow. And thank God Sony kind of owns Willie and like they okayed it. Mm -hmm. Thank God that they did. Yeah. I don't know that part of it. Yeah. I don't know. When Willie's on a song, you just think it's okay. But we, we went to the right channels, and Sony's cool. They're, they're yeah. okay in it, so it's out there. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's unbelievable. And it's a great song. Yeah. I mean, oh, it is. It's unbelievable. It's great music. So, is your passion for music ever surpassed golf? I mean, like, like different stages of your life and stuff. I mean, what where today? Like, is it more music versus golf? And where do you, where do you stand? I think it just passes time for me going through what I'm going through to be able to do an album and another album and, and concentrate, hang out with great friends mm -hmm. like I do in Nashville and um, and a couple here in, in Darnell. It keeps the time going where I'm not thinking about the cancer, the, the health and all that stuff. We just laugh and have a good time. And, um, but the album got me through some hard times yeah. when I got diagnosed and uh, Kid Rock was there when it, when it Anna told me, and like we're both crying, and yeah, you know, it just like you're scared. Yeah, it's just scared shows when you get cancer, but yeah. Let's say I'm doing all the healthy things I need to do. I'm doing all the checkups and stuff, but yeah, shit, man, I made it past 50. Never thought I'd get there. If I get past 60, hallelujah. You're right there. I mean, the door, I've so. had a great life. Been, yeah. God's been great to me. People've been great to me. And we got beautiful, healthy kids. Shit, what else do I need? Get a great positive attitude. That's the number one thing they need. So, I mean, it's it's great to have a good escape in life, and to have both golf and music is that's pretty special. Uh, for you know, for me, it's golf. Get on the course, you kind of forget about everything, the noise that's around you. But with music and creating music and the friendships you've cultivated, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they yeah. come into work, but sometimes you know, even they come here. This whole thing's set up. It's not Mac Eleven. You do a whole album here. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the guys will stop off I-40 and say, hey, we're going to go to your house and cut one. Yeah, no problem. It's all there. <laughs> Here's the code. And, but it's work for them. It's like, but when I play golf with them, I want to help them. Yeah. It's not really work for me. I just enjoy being with them because I know I've got two friends yeah. with me out there. You yeah. know, and, and I love watching them do what they do. Yeah. I just wish golf would, wouldn't last so long. I'd like to play a show or two and you know, in the town and okay, love y'all, bye, I'm going to the next <laughs> one. I stayed the whole week. <laughs> Not on the tour, I only stayed till Friday. I usually missed all the cuts. But... <laughs> <laughs> John Daly, big entertainer. You, uh, when you're here, I know you're in Florida most of the time, but when you're here in Florida, you do a lot of entertaining, cooking, just hanging out. Yeah, my brother's just right over, by, over there on number six. and. He's got grills and stuff, and yeah. we, 
We cook for this whole community sometimes. Yeah. He does a lot more than I do. Yeah. I just, I love to cook. I cook on the bus all the time. And, yeah. So you're not at Hooters, you found here grilling out? <laughs> yeah. I go to Hooters a lot. I don't know who goes more, me or Ron White. <laughs> Ron White sits by the mailbox waiting for his 50% card. <laughs> and he sit. does, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I would have fired him too. So, so this, you're on this golf course and you're the uh, the owner of it. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, what got you into wanting to buy a golf course and taking care of that? Well, I mean, it just it was the right thing to do. The members were struggling. They had bent greens, and they didn't have the money to spend on it. They mm -hmm. had a little uh, $80,000 note over there on the backside they needed to pay off. And it, lost, it was a membership golf course, and um, I kept it going that way for about, geez, 13 years. And I decided, you know, I get so many out-of-town players to come in that um, I just, just made it public. Yeah. And anybody that's still kind of, once that old members, I give them a huge discount and they come okay. and play because, you know, I, I, I want them here. Yeah. Uh, but it's strictly a public golf course, really. What's your personal best out there at this course? I've actually shot 57 on this course. Before. Have you? Yeah. That's what I was. I wanted to ask you. So I was like, you know, it looks, looks open. I don't, know, I don't know the length, but I'm like, I bet John's definitely shot 59. For, so. my, for my tee box, I've added a, a few hundred yards on it. So, okay. I mean, it's probably pushing seven for my tee boxes, maybe eight, maybe 70, 200. Okay. But the back nine gets really tight. Yeah. The front nine's pretty wide open. But, okay. You know, and I, you know, little John was born, you know, in 03, and hoping he'd play golf and, and figured, you know, I'd, he would always have a place to play. Yeah. The girls want to play. They've always got a place to play. Yeah. I let all the high schools, colleges come here and practice and play for free. That's awesome. So that's that's fun. amazing to hear. I mean, so with where Little John's at, um, you know, you guys won the PNC and you know everyone's just rooting super hard for you guys. And you know, I know Tiger's coming off an injury and getting a lot of the coverage. But you guys were just right there and just played so well together. And you guys had such a great experience and won the trophy. It was, it was awesome to see. So much fun. We did. Belts, Travis, we won belts. The, the belts, the belts, <laughs> excuse me. It's true. I, the, the belts. There's nothing, nothing greater than being able to play yeah. in a tournament like that with your son and win. I mean, yeah, that's such a cool. Just, we have such, we, it's our fifth year. We play, we've had so much fun playing yeah. it. Yeah. So, I mean, for him and his, his future looks extremely bright. Um, you know, he's going to your alma mater and he you know, wants to pursue his degree. But, I mean, how proud of you? Uh, are you of him as a father seeing his his uh, golf game progress or just him becoming a, a young man he just turned 18. all my kids have just been outstanding yeah. i mean um you know, shine is a hell of a photographer she ran my shop for a lot of years she wanted to move on and be a photographer she is down hot springs selling insurance she's yeah. doing great um and little john's got the passion for it he knows it's tough because the razorbacks are really good we're going to have you know, he probably won't play a lot this semester, or maybe he's going to redshirt next year because we we're going to have seven seniors next year there. Yeah. So, yeah, he wants to redshirt. I mean, that's great. Concentrate on golf and concentrate on your school and yeah. play, play all the tournaments you can in the summer. And yeah, there's no rush in it no, whatsoever. No, he wants a degree, which that makes me even more proud of. That's him. great. That's great to hear. Appreciate what you do for the game of golf and for charity and just for all of us golf enthusiasts too. So, <laughs> you provided plenty of entertainment. Off the course as well, for you know. So, <laughs> like I said, Travis, I got a great future behind me, man. Oh, you do. You got a lot ahead of you as well. So, appreciate you letting us come into your home and telling these stories and just giving us your time. I know you're a busy guy. So, John, you appreciate it, man. It was awesome. You got See it. you around soon, okay? You bet you.